everybody, Duffy here again, obviously. Um, so, you're probably wondering why I'm talking to you on this microphone. Um, well, as some of you might know, uh, I've been trying to replicate this microphone. Like, physically. Like, I have, over the course of the past few months, gotten a few progressively more accurate um, prototypes of this microphone and gotten them put together, and they work. They do. Um, these come off of my 3D printer and their double-button carbon microphones, and they're not here yet, but they're getting close, and I'm going to keep working on that. But today, um, we're going to talk about something else, because what if you need the sound of this and you don't have time <laughs> to reverse engineer something or to build something or to find an 80, 90-year-old microphone and make it work? Well. You know, you can emulate those things digitally. And so I got to thinking about that. And one of the things that I've recently also acquired, which I 3D printed a nice little travel case for, is a modeling microphone. Now, the reason I picked this thing up is because it is small. It's a little bitty microphone, and it's pocket-sized. It's easy to carry with you. But as a modeling microphone, what it is made to do is to emulate other microphones. So the cool thing about this is that it is made specifically to be modeled to sound like other microphones. And it's from Antelope. This is an Antelope Edge Note. I also have a Verge. And the nice thing about this mic is it's inexpensive. The bad thing is the software that does the emulation is not. Um, and it only has like 13 or 14 other mics. I say only. That's a great thing. But the problem is, is you know, it's only for small pencil mics that are similar in make to this. So you might want something a little bit more robust. And the reason I got this, again, is for travel. But I thought, since this thing is made to take modeling anyway, why don't we see what it can do with other microphones? So at the end, I'm going to show you it modeling this microphone. But first, uh, so I wrote some software that's actually going to help us do that. Let's take a look real quick. So how do we do this? Well, what we have to do is first set up all the microphones that we want to test right next to each other. We need them to be running at the same time so that we can record with them simultaneously. That way we can get a proper sample from them and compare the two. So let's actually hook two of these up and then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so as you're recording identically with both microphones, you're going to want to do a range of different voices. Low voices. Higher voices. And everything in between. Um, you could also play like a sine sweep tone, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment here. Okay, so in order to set up a sine sweep, you just go into Reaper, and you add yourself a nice little effect. We go to sine sweep. And it starts playing. Now you just set Audacity recording and point it at your microphone. <laughs> the important thing is that we record the exact same thing with both microphones, both properly set up at the exact same time. And then what you're going to do is you're going to stop it. And if you are actually recording in stereo like Audacity does, you're going to split stereo to mono track, which is fine. And then we are going to select only the top track. Now, go to Analyze, say Plot Spectrum, and we're going to export that and save it as a text file. All right, and now we do the same thing with the bottom. We select the entire thing, we go to Analyze, we go to Plot Spectrum. Notice it looks different. We export, and we save it as Mic 2. All right, that is all you need for this to work. You have samples from both mics that are identical. 
Okay, I've moved over to my studio PC where this will be a little bit easier to show you guys. Um, there's four channels, but don't worry about that right now. I've just taken two of the plot spectrum analyses, one from the Edge Note and one from a Sontronics Orpheus. Uh, and now we're going to open up the modeling software and make a model. Now, this is what you're normally going to be seeing, okay? Um, you can choose to make a model for Audacity. You can choose to make a model for Reaper's Reefer. Or we can do one for Moss EQ. But the process is largely the same. The first thing that we're going to do is, say, create a profile. Mic 1 will be the mic you were attempting to get to sound like the other mic. So Mic 1 will be the modeling mic. And Mic 2 is going to be the mic that you're trying to copy the sound of. So we are going to first pick the edge note because that is the modeler mic. And then we are going to pick the Sontronics Orpheus as the destination. Uh, so now it's asking us to name our curve and we are going to say edge to Sontronics Orpheus. Hey, don't judge my typing. Um, okay. Please close the program and restart to produce another curve. We don't necessarily need to do that because we're done. So let's go and apply the curve. All right, we're going to select the track that we want to sound like the other one. So we'll select the Edge Notes track, and then we're going to go to Effect, and then we're going to go to Filter Curve. We go to Manage, and we go to Import. Now, as you can see, I've created quite a few curves here. Um, but what we're going to do is pick the one that goes to the Sontronics Orpheus. And we have several of them. But this is the one that we're after. Look at that. Look at that. That actually changes our EQ pattern quite a bit. So if we apply that, the edge note should now sound a lot more like our Sontronics Orpheus. And Reaper's going to work the exact same way. So this time when we open the software, we're going to say Reefer Simplified. Again, it's going to tell us to pick Mic 1, which is going to be our edge note. Mic 2, which is going to be our Sontronics Orpheus. And do you want to save your Reefer code as a snippet file? Don't do this unless you're a programmer and want to mess around with it. I would just say no. Would you like to automatically add your curve to Reaper? Say yes. And it will be added as new curve DW. You're going to want to rename it. It tells you so here. Now we say OK and keep agreeing with it. And we can close the software. Now if we start a new track in Reaper, and we go into the effects, the first thing we're going to do is find Refair. And hit OK. Now, we're going to check out our presets. And at the very end, oh ho ho ho, new curve DW. And it's kind of off the charts because, it, well, uh, come on. There we go. It's kind of off the charts because it defaults to this three. Why, I don't know. Um, but we can change that to a window that will allow it to look a little better. Make sure your curve's good. Go to here. Go to uh, rename preset. We're going to say edge note to Orpheus. Yay! And we have saved this preset. Um, and now... We can skip around our presets, and this will be the most recent that we have, Edge Note to Orpheus. So if you record something with the Edge Note, this should bring the sound of it more in line to a recording that you would have made with the Sontronics Orpheus. Now, I still want to stress the fact that there is a lot more to modeling than just mic EQ matching. And that's true, and some of you are going to point that out. But it does take you a long way toward getting one microphone to sound like another. Um, and in a lot of cases, that's really all you need. 
sometimes to substitute one mic for another, if just for a few pickup lines or temporarily, or just to bring a couple of things in line with one another to the point where, like, no one's going to notice that they don't sound the same. Um, so EQ matching is a good way to offset response patterns that don't match very well. And while it's not going to be a perfect model of whatever mic you're using, it's going to get you close. So, like, it's a very handy thing to do. Um, but with stuff that's a little bit more aggressively different than the microphone that you might be using, like this, for example, <laughs> um, stuff like this is going to need a little bit more work to get to sound, uh, for, to get the modeling mic to sound like this. So in the case of something like this, I wouldn't just use the EQ modeling software that you would just saw. I start with that, but then on top of it you can add other things. You can add hiss, you can add distortion, you can add overdrive, things like that. And so in order to get this, um, well, in order to get this to sound like this, there's a little more work to do. Um, but, on the other hand, if I wanted this to sound like this, this is doable. This is absolutely doable. Um, but again, you know, you have to have a reasonable expectation of what the modeling mic is and what type of microphone you're trying to emulate. Um, now, I promised you guys I was going to do this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this microphone and then I am going to add um, the, the equalization and then I'm going to additionally add some foldover distortion and some hits so that it will sound a lot more like this one. So uh, let's cut to that real quick and we're going to hear first the original. Okay, so in a properly treated sound booth this is what the microphone from 1930, 1940 sounds like. This is an original double carbon button Model EL microphone. And then we're going to hear the replica. And this is a reasonable facsimile of it taken on an Antelope Verge modeling microphone. Now, it doesn't sound exactly the same, of course, because nothing's going to sound quite exactly the same. But if you needed a convincing emulation of that microphone for a production you were doing, this would certainly qualify. So, while EQ matching isn't everything there is to be said for mic modeling, it sure does get you a long way toward it. Well, I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed this. And there are a lot more uses for the software than making a good microphone sound like a really old microphone like you can do mic matching to a degree on a lot of different types of microphones so if you want to check out the software and play with it yourself link in the description as long as you don't mind downloading sketchy zip files from websites you've never heard of uh, that being said see you guys later and thanks for watching